within me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Come on, clap your hands, saints. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Hallelujah. We don't want the Lord to cast us away but he's here with us, hallelujah. And so most righteous and eternal Father, we want to exalt you. We want to lift up your name on high. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can have a second dedicated service unto you as we honor our mothers today. And so Father, we pray for the congregants that are here that you begin to touch their hearts and mind, O oh God. Help them, O oh God Almighty, to give unto you the best worship and honor that they can give unto you. As your word says, when mother and father forsake us, you, God, is there to pick us up. So while we honor our mothers, the Bible says, can a mother um, love turn away from her child that she bear? And the Bible says, yes, she can. But the word of God says that when she do so, you will lift us up. And so, Father, even now, begin to lift up hearts, mind, bodies, and soul, and spirit to worship you in truth and in spirit. And we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship God? Hallelujah. Are you ready to exalt him? Hallelujah. Are you ready to honor him this morning? All right. So this morning we're going to worship the Lord in our session today. More like, you know, giving him adoration songs. And the first song we're going to start with is, I just want to be where you are. Do you want to be where God is right now? Hallelujah. It's better than what we're going through right now. So I'd ask, invite you all just to stand, everyone, once you can, as we sing, I just want to be where you are. Here we are in your presence, lifting holy hands to you. Here we are, here we are, praising Jesus for all the things he's brought us through. Come on, mothers, all the things that he has brought you through. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory. In your presence, that's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. Sing, I want to be. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. One more time, tell him I want to be here. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence.
presence feasting at your table surrounded by your glory in your presence that's where i always want to be i just want to be with you I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. One more time. I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Do you want to be with him? Hallelujah. But if you want to, you have to love the Lord. <laughs> because the Bible says the Lord knows his own. And if you love him, you will keep his commandments. So we sing, I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Just as how you know you're bigging up mommy today and say, Mama, we love you. And all of these nice things you, you tell her. We're going to sing that unto the Lord just now. It's to say, I love you, Lord, today. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way and so I, I praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise i love you i love you i love you lord today because you care for me in such a special way and so i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise my heart my mind my soul belongs to you you paid the price for me way back on calvary and so i praise you and i lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise sing and tell him that i love you I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way, and so I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the King. Most high. Yes, you are the King. Most high. Yes, you are the King. Most high. Yes, you 
you are the king and you are most high sing yes you are the lord most high. come on lift him up tell him yes you are the lord most high sing yes you are the lord most high yes you are the lord Yes, you are my king. Most high. Yes, you are the king. Most high. Yes, you are the king of kings. Most high. Yes, you are the king. Most Come on, church, sing it to him. Tell him. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the King of Kings. Most high. Yes, you are. Yes, you are the King. Most high. Yes, you are the King. Most high. Yes, you are the King. Most high. Come on, clap your hands, saints. Lift up your voice with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Without a music, hallelujah. Let your voice echo in the heavens. He is the Lord. He is the King. And he is the Most High. Hallelujah. We close out with this song. You are our strength. Hallelujah. Come on, mothers. There's a lot of times that you feel weak. And the Lord has strengthened you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. Sing, you are my strength, you are my strength. You 
are my home, home like no other, home like no other. Who reaches to me, Who reaches to me in the fullness, in, in the fullness of your of your name in the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up in the fullness in the fullness of your grace in the power of your The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our hope. He is our peace. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands and raise our hands and magnify the Lord? Let us give praise. Let us give our adoration this morning to the kings of kings and the lords of lords. He is our strength this morning. Without him, we would fail. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Greetings and salutations. Brothers and sisters family members, friends. Welcome to our virtual online church. We're coming to you from the Church of God of Prophecy at 36 Maxwell Avenue. Amen. Today is being observed as a special day in Jamaica and also in our local church. It's Mother's Day, and it's a day when we celebrate with our children. Hallelujah. So we say this morning, special Mother's Day greetings to our hard-working mothers across Jamaica and the world. Those mothers who are saving lives, like the nurses, the doctors, the firefighters, and the police officers. Happy Mother's Day. To the mothers who gave birth to their first child. To those mothers who lost a child, we mourn with you. To the mothers who themselves lost their own mother, we grieve with you. To all the single mothers, God bless you. To the grandmothers, the stepmothers, the mothers-in-law, the foster mothers, the church mothers, and godmothers, we love you and may God bless you while we thank you for guiding us down the path of righteousness and choosing God as our Lord and Savior, we love you. Happy Mother's Day. So I guess that all the mothers right across the length and breadth of Jamaica and across the world will feel 
welcome. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Thank you. My name is Nola Jackson, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. We are worshiping under the theme, I Soar with Godly Wisdom. According to 2 Chronicles 8, verses 1 through to 12, and this is what I did, I summarize it. But instead, Solomon said to God, You have shown me great loving kindness and mercy to my father David, and made me king in his place. You have made me king of our people, as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge, so that I may go out and come in to perform my duties before these people. Therefore, God saw that he asked for wisdom and knowledge, and so God offered unto him many riches. So let us today, in our own wisdom, ask God to give us wisdom. Let us not ask for witches. God will give us in due season. God bless you. We are going to be worshiping today as we, at this time, are going to be asking Brother O'Neill Perkins to come and to open this service in prayer. Morning, everyone. Want to give God thanks this morning. No, I'm here to pray. However, this song came in my spirit this morning, and I'm feeling a sense of victory this morning. I feel light coming into the house and happy coming into the house. So this song, the Lord reigns, Psalm 97. The word of God came in my spirit this morning. A fire goes before him and burn all his enemies. The hills melt like wax at the presence of God. So even though we don't have the musicians here this morning, I want the praise team, if they could, just sing this song for me. The Lord reigns. You can stand with us. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. And let the people be glad. The Lord God reigns. Hallelujah. A fire goes before him and burned up all his enemies. The hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns, the Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, let the earth rejoice, and let the people be glad, the Lord God reigns, hallelujah, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. The Lord reigns this morning. Amen. The Lord reigns this morning in Hallelujah. 36 Maxwell Avenue. Hallelujah. The Lord reigns this morning Hallelujah. in Jamaica. There is victory in the here. Hallelujah. There is victory in the here this Thank morning. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is victory in the here this Hallelujah. morning. Hallelujah. And I know in my spirit you, that Jesus. God reign supreme Hallelujah. he's lord he's king of kings Hallelujah. he's lord of lords Amen. and he sit on the right hand of the father Hallelujah. 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 so rather than just praying like how we normally pray i'm just going to declare the scripture Hallelujah. the lord reigneth 
Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the island of Jamaica be glad. There are clouds and darkness are round about the Lord. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burn up all his enemies round about him. Lightnings enlighten the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills of Jamaica melt like wax at the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the whole earth, the heavens declare the righteousness of the Lord. And all the people shall see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images. Hallelujah. That boast themselves of idol worship. Worship him, all he gods. Hallelujah. Amen. Zion heard and was glad. The daughters of Jamaica rejoice because thy judgments, O oh Lord. Rejoice, Jamaica, because of the judgments of God. His judgment is true. Hallelujah. His judgment is righteousness. His judgment is justice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For thou, O oh Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. Ye that love the Lord must eat evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He preserveth the souls of the saints in Jamaica. He, he delivereth them out of the hand of wicked men. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown in righteousness and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoice, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Hallelujah. I will leave it there this morning. We just want to declare Psalm 97 over this house, over the people, over Jamaica. Victory is here. Victory has come. We believe it in our spirit that the Lord reigns supreme in Jamaica. There is none that can challenge him, none that can challenge his authority. Hallelujah. And we stand in that authority, the authority of Jesus Christ, that he reigns in this house today. Bless you. Bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice. Hallelujah. God reigns supreme. To him be our glory, honor, and the power. Amen. Happy to stand again. As we read for our first lesson, Psalm 46. I'm going to ask you to follow while I read. Just a minute, please. The children for the puppetry, will you please? Organize yourselves after the reading, then you will be coming on. All right, I'll read. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear, though the hearth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof were and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its dwelling, with Dwelling thereof. There is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the old place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melts to it. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, 
Behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, he and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, let us have our puppetry at this time. This will be followed by the congregational song, the Hallelujah side. Let us put it together for the children. We have to encourage them, you see. If you remember, when we were their age, it wasn't easy. But thank God we made it. So we need to encourage these boys and girls. 
so they will be able to do it as well. Our congregational hymn, I'm going to ask you to stand, please. Once a sinner far from Jesus, I was perishing with cold. But the blessed Savior heard me when I cried. Then he threw his arms around me and he led me to his fold. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Help me ring the Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up towards heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Though the world may sweep around me with her dazzle and her dreams, yet I envy not her vanities and pride. For my soul looks up towards heaven where the golden sunlight gleams. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Let me sing my Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up twice heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Not for all the golden millions would I leave this precious place. Though the tempter to persuade me of a stride. For I'm safe in God's pavilion, happy in his love and grace. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Help me ring the Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Here the sun is always shining, here the sky is always bright. Tis no place for gloomy Christians to abide. For my soul is filled with music and my heart with great delight. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Let me ring the Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up towards heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. And upon the streets of glory when we reach the other shore. And I've safely crossed the Jordan's rolling tide. You will find me shouting glory just outside my mansion's bright. When I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Let me sing the Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up towards heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Let me ring the Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up towards heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Let me ring my Savior's praises far and wide. For 
have opened up towards heaven all the windows of my soul and I'm living on the hallelujah side hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm living on the hallelujah side. Glory and this Jesus. just tells me that if you are here today and you're a mother and for the hearing of my voice and you know you're a mother, you really, really need to be living on the hallelujah side. Yes, tell you why. As a teacher, I can tell you because I work with these small ones and they will drive you nuts. You have to have God on your side. <laughs> you have to be living on the hallelujah side because I can tell you they are a handful. And you have one at home and tell you, when they say something to you, sometimes you have to wonder and say to yourself, oh my God, take this case, Lord. I am telling you that as Christians, we really, really need to live on the hallelujah side. Hallelujah side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Our, okay, I'm going to ask the man in Brooks to come right now. And he's going to do to mothers with love. So mothers, I'm going to ask that you stand just place your hand across your chest and receive this with love this morning. All the mothers and grandmother, you're here. You are going, this is your time. This is a day, and this is from the heart of a child to mothers with love. mean mother is such a simple word but to us there's a meaning seldom heard for everything we are today our mother loved us and showed us the way we love our mothers all our days for enriching our lives in so many ways she set us straight and then she set us free and that's what the word mothers mean to us Thank you for being a wonderful mother, mom. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. All right. So I'm sure that you feel love, mother, from the heart of a child. And he said, have a happy Mother's Day, mom. And so, I am sure that you, everybody, you will see a gift on your chair. You can just open it and look at it just now. There is a gift there, and it is to mothers with love. Just take a peek, just a small peek, and close up until after church. Our second scripture comes to us from St. Luke 15, verses 24, 11 to 24, and this will be done by Daviano Edi. Let's have him. Good morning, church. Please turn your Bible to Luke, Luke 15, ver chapter 11 to 22. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 22. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, all there, arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined him. 
and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the, that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And then he came to himself. He said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had, compa and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son, the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no, no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hands, and shoes on his feet. There ends a, there ends a portion of God's holy word. encourage them we need to encourage the children please remember threaten them when we do that this time i'm going to be introducing our day's speaker i would like to introduce to you today sister nicole perkins she's married the mother of one son stepmother to two girls. Sister Perkins loved the Lord with all her heart. She's a sister. She's a mother. She loves the Lord. That's what I will tell you for now. All right? So Sister Ruth Smart will be coming to do a prayer for the preacher, after which Sister Perkins will come. Bless the Lord. Most righteous and eternal God, we honor you and we thank you who is the God of all mothers. Father, we thank you that you are in control of everything. And so, Father, we come before you today because we are ready, O oh God Almighty, for you to feed us through your daughter who is a mother. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every principalities and power, everything that wants to come up against your daughter, feeding the people with the word today, that right now, God, they will be put asunder, their backs will be turned. And so, Father, we pray that we will open up our hearts, our mind to receive from you through your daughter. Make her a vessel. Make her an offering. Pour new wine into your daughter even now in the name of Jesus Christ. And may our wine skin be new and equipped to receive this wine that you are about to pour out from her. Father, we thank you that you have already blessed her from the crown of her head to the very sole of her feet. And I decree and declare that every word that comes from out of our mouth will be like fire. Oh God, to consume away, oh God, the things that are in us that is not of you. And so, Father, we pray even know that there will be a backing of heaven oh god on her side battalion of angels right now in the name of jesus we declare and decree this groan oh god almighty cleanse oh god almighty for your daughter to stand and say thus say the lord and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name amen Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord. Let us lift him up. The word of God says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know he that the Lord, he is God. Hallelujah. So let us just lift him up right now. Let us lift him up. Let us lift him up. Let us lift him up right now, Jesus. Let us lift him up. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we can't do nothing, mighty God, in our strength, but we can do it through you, Father God. Today's theme is I soar. The sub theme is I soar with righteous knowledge. I soar with the wisdom of God. So before I start to talk to you about what the word of the God that the Lord has laid on my heart, let me just give the give the Lord of heaven um, some time to work right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your power. Hallelujah. We thank you for the Holy Ghost, Jesus. We thank you, God, for the gospel, mighty God. And we pray right now, Jesus, that your word will become a living word and it will manifest among man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, dear Lord God, that your word will come alive and will be received with the love of the brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Heavenly Father, we come against the spirit of misrepresentation and mis. Um, interpretation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we pray, dear Lord God, that you alone will be glorified. You alone will be established. We reduce self even now, Father God. And we decree and declare that the Holy Ghost will take position. Mighty God, your word said, though he mounted of Jerubabel. So right now, Father God, I decree and declare, though he mounted of Nicole, thou shalt be a plain in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every fear we reduce you even now. And we call for the spirit of boldness. We call for the spirit of the Lord to take position even now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty God, I come against intellectualizing the word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I decree and declare that your will and your will only will be established. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So today, uh, the word that the Lord laid on my heart is coming from the book of Luke. It's the parable about the prodigal son. So I'm here to focus on just two of the three characters in this parable. The father and the son, the younger son. All right? So we see in the story that the son is, referred, the son is often referred to as the prodigal son. So we want to explore and see what, who is a prodigal, right? And who is a father? So we're looking at those two adjectives today. So the word prodigal is often used to refer to the young son, and the word means extravagant, lavish, wasteful, a free person. The father now, according to the Strong's um, Dictionary, is one who imparts life. He's the originator, and he's committed to it. Right, so the life that he has in part, he's committed to it. Additionally, father is also used to describe God or heavenly father. He who imparts life from physical birth to the gift of eternal life, which comes through the second birth, right? So those are the two main words that we'll be looking at today. So in the parable, we notice that the young son committed a very inappropriate act. He went to his living father and ask him for his inheritance. That's not the practice, right? It's normally done when the father, the inheritance is normally shared to the children after the death of the father. Or he will speak to them when he's like on his sick bed and so on. But we notice in this story that the son came to his father, his living father, and asked him for his inheritance. And this is a rather inappropriate act. It's as if the young son is saying, Dad, you are dead. So just give me what you have and let me be on my way. Right? So let us explore this. Why would a child come to his living father who is looking after him, giving him everything? The father had servants. He had everything that he needed. Right? Why would the son do such a thing? Well, we, we can all assume that he might feel, feel as if he was grown. He's a big man. I am mature. I can look after myself. Why have to wait until you are all gone for me to get all of this? I need it now, I need my independence now, and I give it to me and let me go on my way. We notice that the father gave the young man his inheritance. He didn't come and say, no son, don't do this, don't do that, and all of that. He allowed him his free will, and he gave him his inheritance. When his father gave him his inheritance, the young man, soon after, the scripture said, left home. 
The scripture also highlighted that he didn't just leave home and go down Maxfield Avenue to live or up half a tree. He went to a far away land, right? He didn't stay close. So you see, how, you see how independent him feel, you know? Because normally you, you would you want, want to be close to family, close to familiar land, close to people that you know. But what we notice in the scripture here is that the young son decided to go to a far, far away land. He needed no interference, right? So we can interpret this to mean that he wanted his independence. He didn't want to help from nobody. He didn't want a family member close by. And also, thank you, Jesus, also to note that he didn't even, it wasn't even, he didn't want it if th this, th the money to show off. Because if he wanted it to show off, it would make sense to stay around people, you know, don't it? You buy a nice car, buy some nice shoes and everything, if that was a desire. But it wasn't, the, the desire wasn't for him to show off. That's what I'm getting from the scripture. He wanted independence. He wanted freedom. He wanted to exercise his freedom and his independence. So I said to our young children here, especially teenagers, many a times you feel like you want your independence and you want your freedom from your parents and you want to go away from them, be careful. Independence and freedom can be very expensive, a very, very costly act, right? So let us continue to just meditate on the scripture and see what it said. Because we realize in the scripture here that the young man exploded in rebellion. He decided that my warm freedom, I'm going to want it now. And his father gave it to him. Exactly, he took it by force. So after he got his freedom and he journeyed away, he left his home and he went to a far away land, right? And what he did, he squandered his money. Remember, you know, the word prodigal means wastefully lavish. Him live a lavish life and him and him friend them gone out and them, them squander it and them do all these things. What are we doing with our free will? What are we doing with our free will? Are we squandering it? Are we using it incorrectly or are we using it right, right? He, right here in the scripture, we realize that the young man squandered his free will. He squandered it and he spent it. But guess what? Adversities came in the form of a famine. Adversities came in the form of a famine and he had no money. He had nothing. He was now broke, literally broke. He had nothing. The scripture went on to say that the young man, this Jewish boy, note, Jewish boy, the, um, the literature that I read outlined that Jewish boys or Jewish people, them not like pig. The man pig and a friend, them not eat pig meat and all them something here. But we realize in the scripture that the young man hired himself out to work among pigs. That is how bad his condition gets. He had no money. He had no choice. He, his religious his, his practices, his, the teachings and all of that. He couldn't even honor them to survive. He pushed them away and he went and did an abominable act. And he was there working amongst the pigs. The scripture even went on to describe how deplorable the situation was. Because it went on to say that he wanted to eat the pig's food, right? He was so hungry, nobody helped him. All the friends that he was squandering it with, say, be careful, or you follow people, you know, children. Because all the friends that he was squandering is, 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 is inheritance with them gone. And a pig food, him I look now for eat. You understand me? His situation is so bad. The adversities that he found himself in was so bad that he wanted to eat the pig's food. That again show you how expensive, how costly independence and freedom is, right? Be careful. Watch how we're using our free will because we don't want to squander it. Hallelujah. So we realize now that the young man started to lack. He started to lack. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Father God. Hallelujah. How many times, many of us, my, I, I myself, has walk, walk away from godly instruction. Walk away from God. Before I got saved, I have many friends who were Christians. Many friends who told me the word, 
who encouraged me to give my life to God, but I wasn't listening. I had my free will and I was using it and I was squandering my free will. I, I did what I wanted to do and I wasn't living based on the godly principles of, uh, of the Bible. And guess what? I found myself in a pig's pen. I found myself in the pig's pen where I almost died just like this prodigal son. I almost died, right? In the sense where my, my life was hanging by a thread. I was in an ICU unit on life support machine. When I woke up and saw those machines beeping, it's only movies to see them something that you know. And I was not prepared to see myself in this position. So I'm speaking to anyone who is not yet saved, who have not yet exp experienced the living God in their lives, and so on. Do not squander the free will that the Lord has blessed you with. Not many of us will be able to return from that pig pen. Not many of us will be able to get up and say, Father, forgive me because I've sinned against you and, 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 and man. So, so let us just be wise. Let us be wise, brothers and sisters. The word of God said that we have all fallen short of, uh, uh, of, of God. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So if you find yourself in a one pig pen right now, and you are living in a pig pen situation, ask yourself, who is God to you? Because who God is to you, he will determine your faith. And what, what do I mean by this? If God is a loving and gracious God, if God is able to, if you believe that God is able to clean your filthy clothes and clothe you with righteousness, or do you believe that God is an unforgiving God, a God who will hold a grudge against you? See, if you believe the latter, that God is an unforgiving God, you'll stay in your pig pen. But you see, if you believe that God is a gracious God, a God that will cover all your sins and all your unrighteousness, a God who will purge you with his up and make you as white as snow. You will be able to come again and have a second chance at this life. Realize that the prodigal son, his, his quest for independence was really an attempt to soar. He wanted to soar, he wanted to strive. But what he wasn't prepared for is to overcome the adversities with resilience. Because you realize that when he attempts to soar, in, 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 in this scripture, you realize that when he bucked up on adversities, he was not able to overcome with resilience. So I say to your brothers and sisters that life, the road to life is not an easy road. It's full of potholes. The devil, the devil caused rain to fall and mash you up. Just like how when, when rain fall, the road in Jamaica mash up. The road mash up, you're dropping a pothole, you're dropping some deep, deep pothole. Broke your foot and broke your neck too. But guess what? You need the right tools to overcome all your adversities with resilience. So we realize now, so this young man, in his quest to soar, right? He soar without godly knowledge, so therefore he found himself in a pit. He found himself in a pig pen, right? But guess what? The young man was humble, you know. Because many a time, before I even looked up the word prodigal, I mean, I, I believe that prodigal means wayward. Um, somebody would not believe in a God, everything bad, right? But if I realize the word just means lavish, extravagant, right? A free person. So he's a person who wants free will, right? And he wants him own way. So guess what? We realize now that the, 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 the prodigal, the young son, he found the right tool to overcome his adversities with resilience. He humbled himself. You realize in the scripture, what did he say? He real, when he was there in the, in the pig pen, he started to reflect on his life, you know. And he come to his senses. Thanks, my sister. And he said, but wait, they, may never, they have servants. And them servants are never going to live better than me. Right? So these servants that were living better than him, and he said, you know what? Him humble himself and he said, Father, forgive me. So him, him turn from his, 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 his wrong ways. Him turn from soaring without godly knowledge now. And him go back, right? And him go back 
and him ask God to forgive him. Right? Many of us need to ask God to forgive us, and we need to ask people in our lives to forgive us too. Because in our attempt to, for independence and to exercise our free will, we have hurt many people, and we have gone off on our own. So we have some people, even today on Mother's Day, some children who need to come back to their mothers and say, Mother, I have sinned against you and God. Forgive me. Right? So let us think about that. Let us, because you realize in the scripture that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. Because he is able to cause this young man to get his senses back. Configure himself in our principles because obviously he was taught the good things. So I say to your parents, arm your children with the right tools. Teach them the word of God so that they will never ever depart from it. Because you realize in this scripture that when a young man was in the pig pen, right? In remember, say, me not have the right tools out here, you know. Me not equipped for this world out here. Me can't overcome any of the adversities out there with resilience. So guess what? Him look back to him father and him turn, right? So I'm saying to anybody who is hearing me, that if you find yourself in a pig pen situation, the Lord God is able to restore you. He's able to renew you. And let us look at the father right now. What was the father busy doing all this time? He was busy looking out for his son. Right? It, the word of God said in, in Luke here that he saw him afar off. He never did reach close enough. He saw him afar off. And this, when I read this, it reminded me of the omnipresence of God. The omnipresence of God that the, the Lord searched for you. He's always there looking for you. I think it is Psalms 139 that says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend in heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in soul, you are there. The father was there seeking out for his son. He knew that his son was not equipped. He knew that his son was not yet mature to overcome his adversities with resilience. He knew, he knew he wasn't ready. But did the father fold him hand and say, make him go out there go perish. Make, make the world near him up raw. And when him come back, I'm going to rub it all over him face and say, yes, your man. So because your man, that you forget, stay out there. So when the young man acknowledged that he can't manage anymore and he returned to his father, his father was there waiting on him. His father ran and greeted him with a kiss. He clothed him and he gave him a fine meal. He was celebrated. So if you're out there that say, I'm gone too deep in a sin. I'm gone too deep in all of them something I'm get myself in. A. Let me tell you something. The Lord is able to restore you. He's able to clothe you. He's able to feed you. He's able to pull you out of your situations. Right? So if you're sitting here or if you're listening and you're hearing this, note that the Lord is able to forgive you. And I'm saying to you that if you're willing to accept Lord, the Lord as your Savior, if you're willing for God to help you to turn from your wickedness, if you want to be restored, if you want to be taken out of your pig pen like situation, just hold up your hand and say, Father, forgive me because I've sinned and fall short of your glory. Forgive me, mighty God. Oh, Heavenly Father, wash me and make me clean and use me in mighty way. Equip me, Father God, with the tools to overcome my adversities. Equip me with the tools to get out of my situation. Because guess what, no? So you, you, might, you might stand in your own knowledge, you know, and your own understanding, your own word, and you might find one way out right now, today. But you see, if you're, do, if you're not using the right tools to come out of your pig pen situation, you're going to find yourself back there. So therefore, you're gonna, you might overcome your adversities at this time, but guess what? We don't want to overcome today, and tomorrow we'll book up a night again. We want to overcome all adversities with resilience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the only way you can overcome those adversities with resilience is through God the Father. 
and he is waiting for you. He is looking over there for you and he's waiting to greet you. He's waiting to clothe you with righteousness. He's waiting to take off all those filthy garments. Everything that all the sins and iniquities that has been blowing you like a leaf out there. The Lord is willing to restore you. He's willing to feed you. He's willing to clothe you. He's willing to give you his name and call you a peculiar person, a child of God. He's willing to renew you with his son, Jesus Christ, through whom we are joined here. So let me tell you something. Every Zion type situation, every part situation you find yourself in, the Lord God is able to restore you. Because guess what? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for pouring in me right now. In the book of Obadiah, you know, the word talk about, the word said, up on Mount Zion there will be resilient um, deliverance. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Like that, thing, that is one of the, one of the verses in the Bible where come a living life to me. It said, up on Mount Zion there will be deliverance. There will be, will be, shall be, means it is already established. It is already done, right? But what is Mount Zion? A parched land. It is a stronghold, right? When you look through the strongs and you look at the word, it says only the messianic authority can conquer Mount Zion. So guess what? You see, if you're over out there trying to overcome your adversities without the messianic authority without jesus in your life you ain't going to come out of your part situation you understand me it's going to remain the same deliverance will not come to your house so deliverance only come to the house through jesus christ through whom we are joint heirs right so I, my prayer today is that every one of us, every, and anybody, anybody who is sitting here, anybody who is hearing me, who find themselves in a pig pen-like situation, anybody who find themselves upon Mount Zion, who has struggled with a stronghold, right? I teach young adults, many a time they must, they must, they must struggle with, with addictions, like ganja and them something there. The Lord is able to restore you. The Lord is able to restore you. The Lord is able to make your house a fire and a flame. He said, in the same book of Obadiah, he said that he will increase. Can somebody find and tell me exactly what it says? He said either Jacob would be a flame and Joseph will be a fire. Some of them, Obadiah the, um, 17, 18, thereabout. And guess what? So when I look at what um, Joseph means, it means to increase. The Lord is able to increase you. So you see, if you're in a lack, if there's a famine in your life, the Lord is able to increase you. He's able to provide because the Lord can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask or think of. Right? He's able. He will increase you. He will make your house a fire and a flame. A fire minute, he will make you a battle axe, so therefore you can chop down every situation in your life that is setting you in one position. Right? He is able to free you of that, that addiction that you're suffering. Many teenagers suffer all sorts of addictions, sexual addictions, all sorts of adversities in your life. The Lord is able to restore you if you hold on to God. And, and as I said, the only way, though, you will receive your deliverance, you will be able to turn around and change. Is, 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 is it, it is dependent on what the Lord means to you. And guess what? The word, the living word of God, the undisputable word of God tells us that the Lord is a God of grace. He's a God of grace. Each morning, new grace and mercies we all receive. So guess what? He's able to renew you. He's able to restore you. He's able to give you that new birth, that regeneration. He is able to do it. Once you strive to overcome your adversities with resilience, with the word of God. So as you say the theme today, children, I'm going to ask you all to stand. 
other children here today, I want to ask you all to stand. If you believe you're a child of God and you want to stand too, feel free to stand, right? If the adults want to stand, we are children of God, so feel free to stand if you want to stand. As you say the theme, I soar, which means, I soon tell you what you need to say, what you should say, which means strive to overcome adversities, challenges, problems, issues, that homework, that assignment, that teacher, that not explain the concept well, right? As you strive to overcome all the adversities in your life, all the struggles in your life, do it with wisdom. So let us say this together. I strive, I strive to overcome more. adversities, adversities. With, resilience, with resilience, with the wisdom and knowledge of the living God. Remember, your faith is what determines where you end up. Remember your faith. So you see, if you decree and declare this and don't believe it, adversities will still be in your way. You can only overcome with godly knowledge and faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With godly knowledge and faith. The Lord is able to bless you. He's able to expand your borders. And he's able to extend your territories. He's a God forever. And, and e even so too, in everything that you're doing, in everything that you're aspiring to do, do it with God. With the knowledge and the protection of God. We see in Exodus when Moses and the people were moving, right? And the Lord said that he will, he will not come with them. Moses said, no, 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 no. Me not going there if you are not coming, right? If the presence of the Lord is not with you, let me tell you something. You are waste your time. Let me tell you something. You are waste your time. And I can testify to that, people. I can testify that if you're standing on one strength, you are waste your time. Right? So before I'm about to end, you can all sit. I'm about to end. Let me just share another testimony with you because them say we we'll overcome the enemy with the, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies, right? So, certain things for some people come easy, right? So, like for me, sometimes or some things come easy, like learning. So, I find it easy to go through school, right? So when we're done teacher's college, we go to university of a teacher's college, and then we go to university again. But guess what? I was soaring with my knowledge, with my ability, when I take my half, and I wasn't trusting in God. So you know what God do? Cause a famine. So I go to school, I almost finish all of my courses then. But I buck up, and an instructor who would never ever cause my research paper to be a success. So you know what happened? I have to drop out of school because I can't, I can't submit a good research, right? And you need that research to finish. So guess what? I give up because I, have, I didn't have the tools. I was not yet saved. I didn't have the tools to strive to, um, to, to overcome this adversity at this time in my life, right? I never had the godly knowledge. I didn't know that I could pray and ask God to help me and send heavenly help. So guess what? Now I'm going to choke my hand. I'm going to go in on the pig pen. I'm going to give up. I'm going to give up. But each of us born with a specific purpose, right? And it must be fulfilled, right? And from my born, I didn't know I have a purpose, right? And when I was a young teacher in training, I told my, my, my batchmates that I come right back at the college and come teach. And them laugh at me, right? So guess what? I mean, I pursue the dream, you know, but I never in a pursuit with the right tools. So I'm almost dead. I'm in a hospital bed. Them call me for an interview. No, I'm not qualified for the job. Them call me for an interview. And so they will wait until I'm out. From the depth on the bed, you know, I'm realize that things now go on around. Mr. God, take everything. I give everything to you. So I surrender like the sun. And Mr. God, I have sinned before you. So right now in this big pen, take me out. You see the moment me decree, I declare that. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Doors start to open when we never expect. My name starts to get called in our rooms where people not even know about me yet. Right? 
I went on that interview after them patched me up. And the Lord caused it for me to get this job. Remember, me tell us I'm going to start to study and I never finish. So how is it that I'm coming at this job and I not finish? So I did a good, good for two years. Now I go back to school because I trust God because if God give me this, he will make a way. I me, me, me have a young baby, me just and everything. I can't afford to pay a school fee right now. I can't go back to school, but I need a qualification for this job. And I trust God. Adversities came again. Because now the Ministry of Education decides uh, anybody who is there who is not yet qualified, we are demoted. Well, I know. Says he do not take it or leave it. So guess what? Now I go back down to the pay me used to get before. I can't live on this salary again. I already learned how to live for two years on this. So how am I going to overcome? I'm going to go and I tell. I was over at Mother Perks. I'm going to tell her and everybody. And I'm going to everybody start praying. Until then, everybody started to pray. And then one day I was in a staff meeting. And the principal said, we're giving away money for persons who want to upgrade a house, go back to school. I get us pay monthly. And I'm like, look at God. Because now me overcome my adversities with resilience. Now me in one program, I me not get no shot at A. All me do, write the paper and say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless the works of my hand. And I send it in. And God is causing me to overcome my adversities with resilience. So I say to every person inside here who have a dream, who have something that they want to do, but you don't know how to do it. Now you know, go down on your knee and pray. And decree, the word of God says, you shall decree and declare a thing and it shall be established. So decree and declare what you want at the heavenlies. So I say, hallelujah, Jesus. So I say to a young person inside here now, who wants to go back to school and can't go back to school, God is about to find a way. He is about to find a way for you. He is going to make a way when there seems to be no way. He's going to take you out of every situation and he's going to provide the money and he's going to provide the know-how. So if I don't money, I challenge you, but it's things like, but my head tough and I find it hard to learn. Let me tell you something. Enough people may believe so if me market myself as teacher, me now give myself a. The Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. The Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all. So for example, your child inside, you're not upon the prize giving. Me never upon prize giving at high school and them something. They're used to watch everybody and say, Jesus, I can't do something for me. The Lord is able to do exceedingly above all if you strive to overcome your adversities with his help. This morning during the prayer service, the name Devon and Hyacinth came to me while they were praying. My doors off, falling asleep, and the word Devon and Hyacinth. Devon and Hyacinth, I decree and declare del deliverance over your lives. I don't know them. I don't know who they are. I decree and declare that the Lord is able to take you out of whatever situation you find yourself in. The Lord is able to bless you. He's able to heal you. He's able to restore you. He's able to renew you. Be renewed right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be renewed. Release. I will release the power of God and his salvation over your life, Devon and higher saints. I don't know who you are. If you're related to anybody inside here, tell them that the Lord is able to restore. They just need to accept the Lord as their savior. Open up their life, their heart to the Lord, and he will restore you. He will take away that, that part situation. He will say to that dry bone, get up in the name of Jesus. The Lord is able to spread out over every situation that you have and cause life to come to it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every dry well shall be filled with water, even now. So if you are not saved, if you have not yet received the Lord, and you hear this word today and you want to accept the Lord as your Christ and Savior, if you want God to pull you out of that pig pen and help you to overcome your adversities, with resilience. You know what resilience means? You see, when you, have, when you have resilience, you can't go back right there, so. It establish, it is finish. So if you want the situations in your life to keep on a plague you, the demons that will keep on a ride you and a beat you, if you root up and come out and take flight, accept the Lord today. 
as your Lord and Savior. He's able to renew you. Repent of your sins. Repent of your transgressions. Repent of your iniquities. And the Lord will restore you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for praying me, praying with me. And I pray that the Lord God will bless you and, ex and extend your borders and your territories in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Can I have you just to point your hands to Sister Perkins right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God really used her today. God used her today to minister his word. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. We are so thankful to God today that he really ministered to his daughter. So she really poured into us. And so today, we here can say, yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Hallelujah. And for those you are watching us. You are not a Christian. Right now, I'm going to ask you to stand just where you are. Just like I'm going to ask you inside here to stand. I'm going to ask all the mothers to just come to the altar here. We're going to ask our bishop to do this very, very special prayer for our mothers. Those who are really watching and those who are in the house today. To pray for them right That's now. That's what this altar Hallelujah. is for. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. There's a love that's true. Jesus is waiting. He is waiting here for you. Come quickly now. Before he closed the door, that's what this altar is for. Precious God, our Father, we honor and give you thanks today. We thank you for your words. You declare, David declare, thy words, O God, as I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against God. We thank you for the word today. We all have sinned. We all have come short of your glory. We all was in the pit. We all felt in the pit. But David in Psalms 51, when he recognized that he was in the pit, he recognized that there was no turning back for him. But he came to himself as a prodigal son. Hallelujah. And he said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out all my transgressions against thee only of thy sin and done this evil in thy sight. God, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your forgiveness. These mothers that are standing before you today, we thank you for them. They have made mistakes. They sometimes have done some things that is not to your glory. But God, we honor you for, you for your forgiveness. I pray for these mothers today. Mothers who care 
mothers who show love, mothers who have gone through challenging times, mothers who have felt down in the pit, but God, you have helped them to rise and you have helped them to get up. Lord, you have helped them to train their children. You have helped them to admonish your children. In Proverbs 31, you mentioned about the characteristic of a, of a woman. He said, who can find a virtuous woman? Who pearls are above rubies? They have showed themselves. They have delighted themselves in the things of God. God, I pray this morning, this afternoon, that thou will bless our mothers. God, direct our mothers. God, inspired our mothers. Help them to stand up with integrity. Help them not to turn away from thee. Help them, Lord, to show the love of God to their children and grandchildren and even great-grandchildren. I pray for the mothers of Jamaica. I pray for the mothers of this country. Mothers who have gone through difficult times. Mothers who have fell down in the pit, but they have got up. And they have raised their children, oh God, with love. I pray for those mothers this morning who have given attentive attention to their children. I pray for those mothers this morning who do not know the right way to grow their children. I pray that God, your Holy Spirit, will take a hold of them this morning. Show them the way. Point them to Calvary. Point them to acknowledge you as their King of Kings and their Lord of Lords. Lord, I pray this morning in the name of Jesus that thou will bless every woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, there is a mother who is out there in the world who is about to give up because they have reached at the end of the road. They feel that they have reached the end of the rope. But I decree and declare this morning in the name of Jesus that thou will rescue that mother. That mother is about to destroy him, herself. Destroy her children. Oh, praise God. There is a mother this morning who is about to leave their children wandering. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak with one under the authority of the Holy Ghost. I speak with one that you have given the authority and the power. I speak now in the name of Jesus 
that thou will draw that I see your spirit drawing that mother from the pit of hell. I so oh glory to God. I I I oh I see in the spirit realm. I see in the spirit realm that you are rescuing a mother this morning. And you are drawing that mother back to God. In the name of Jesus, bless your people. Grant victory this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Claim the victory this morning. Raise your hand and claim the victory. Oh God. I, 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 I feel some of you are standing before me right now. You have a daughter or a son that is in serious problem. Your womb. You're crying this morning. I'm just going to ask you to rest your hand at your womb. You have borne that boy. You have borne that daughter. But somehow, that daughter has wandered away from God. As the preacher mentioned about the prodigal son. I wanted to weep. Weep for that son. Weep for that daughter. Cry out. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Cry out. God is rescuing that boy right now. God is rescuing that girl right now. In the name of Jesus. I decree it and I declare it. I believe it right now. That God is sending his Holy Spirit to that boy and that girl that you have. And I believe this morning that the Holy Spirit of God. Is moving. In your body. Can you feel the woman said, if I could only touch the hem of this garment, I shall be made whole. I feel the spirit of God. Thank the Lord. Hey, mothers, as you go back to your seat, I would just like to at this time to say, to those who are viewing, thank you so very much for tuning in to the Church of God of Privacy here at Maxwell Avenue. Have a blessed day. May God bless you. Continue to enjoy today, Mother's Day. God bless you. For those of you who are here with us, God bless you. We are now closed. If I had it to do all over again, I'd serve Jesus every day of my life. For I found He alone can really.